Nina Kim. Wow. <laughs> That'll get your Is that attention. the end of the routine? <laughs> that could be an event all of its own. She literally has had an up and down meet. When last we saw Nina Kim, she was in tears following her floor exercise, which was her low score. And yet she stands in 12th place in the overall standings, 13th rather, through three rounds. She only had a 7-8-7-5 seven, seven, for that unfortunate routine. Oh. OK. She saved it. Now, she has that soft touch that I was mm -hmm. talking about. You watch her on some of those acrobatic elements. She really absorbs into the beam, bends her knees, and makes very subtle corrections. That's a real artist on this event. There's right an there. example. You see yeah. that? Mm -hmm. She was a little off, but she didn't really give away a major deduction, and she connected that front somersault right back to the back somersault. Oh. Most gymnasts would have been off the beam on that move. She was somehow able to finesse it. And a two and a half twister, not bad. So have to see how it works out or not for Nina Kim. Kelly Fee, meanwhile, after three rounds, after three events, in fifth place in the overall standings with one routine left, and this is the freeform floor exercise. She had an 8.85 in the vault, 8.975 on bars, and 9.25 on beam. So a solid day for her. She's one of those athletes that need to do well here to compete at the U.S. Championships in a couple of weeks. Oh, she's got power to spare. That two and a half twister to a front layout was effortless. that they're just having a ball out there, and that's the feeling you get from Kelly Fee so far. Yep, she's really, I think that's a, the mark of a great gymnast, if they can take their eyes off the floor, look up into the crowd, or look up into the judges and say, hey, what do you think of what I'm doing here, you know? And that, yeah. that takes a lot of self-confidence. Very few gymnasts can do it. And Kelly Fee puts a nice exclamation point on a fine championship event for her and for us the four rounds complete some of the future stars looking on here in rochester will be back with the final results from the united states classic gymnastics champion and welcome back to rochester new york where the uh, classic is now in the books for 2004 the blue cross arena in rochester new york blue tilly along with Bart Connor, and uh, it was an excellent field, very exciting prospects for our United States women's team going forward. Yes, and the U.S. team is so deep right now that they're cautiously optimistic about success in Athens, and uh, I know they want to keep their excitement level in check because uh, there could be a great possibility of winning medals at the Olympics this summer. Let's go down the stairs now and talk to maybe the outstanding performer of the event, Tia Orlando. Bart? Hi, Tia. It's Bart Connor Hi. here. How are you? Good. 9.575 on your best event, the floor exercise, and all around you looked uh, really solid today. How do you assess your performance? I felt great on all four events, and it felt really good to hit everything. Now, you've been through uh, another round of this gut-wrenching Olympic trials process. Uh, how do you feel going into the U.S. championships and the U.S. trials and, uh, you know, the, the excitement ahead of you in the next few months? Um, I feel really ready. I mean, I feel confident now after this meet. Where do you think you need to improve a little bit to uh, make yourself a factor in that Olympic team? Just staying confident and being 
on hitting every event as much as I can. Tia, this is Lou Tilly, uh, and Philadelphia folks will be very excited <laughs> to watch your progress. They think maybe you're the next Smarty Jones. <laughs> Thanks. What was your favorite event out there? Which do you uh, uh, which do you enjoy the most? Floor. Pardon me? Floor. Floor exercise, yep. certainly, yeah. And here's, uh, we're watching some of you uh, right now. Right from the beginning when you first started gymnastics, Tia, was floor your favorite? Yeah, I always could tumble and I was great at bouncing around on everything. <laughs> Tia, very much uh, thank you for joining us tonight and we hope to continue watching your career develop and uh, great success to thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll be talking with Tia's coach in just a moment, the Parkettes. Uh, a club in Allentown, Pennsylvania, uh, Tia from Philadelphia, and then Salderton. Uh, so many of these little pockets, including your school in uh, Oklahoma, and the women's event continues to grow. It certainly does, and there are about 2,600 gymnastic schools all around the country, and yet there are certain hotbeds, and of course the Parquettes program in Allentown has, since the 60s, produced uh, national and world caliber athletes, and uh, there are several other places. Uh, Texas has a lot of good talent, uh, California as well, and uh, you know a lot of the good gymnasts are coming out of Dallas, Texas now with this WOGA program, but uh, no program has delivered more kids to the national team than the program in Allentown, the Parkettes. And let's talk to Donna from the Parkettes right now. Congratulations, you must be feeling very good tonight. Thank you, we feel great. It was a, a very highlighted evening. The girls did outstanding and we're just thrilled for Tia who came in first. Uh, she works hard every single day and every event was prepared and she came in here with a great attitude, positive, and took one event at a time and uh, ended up in first place. Donna, let's talk about the state of the U.S. team. Of course, the U.S. women won the world championship in uh, Anaheim, California, and there are high hopes for uh, this summer in Athens. How do you assess their chances and what do they need yeah. to do to uh, finish on that podium this summer? I think it's a very exciting moment for USA Gymnastics. The depth of our team is just uh, phenomenal. We've never had this many outstanding gymnasts, and uh, they're very focused, disciplined, and uh, their routines are prepared well. I think that the gold medal will be ours, and they mm. just have to continue to stay focused and work together, and uh, as strong as one of them is going to get, the rest of the team is going to be strong also. We're looking for gold. That's what we're going to go after. Donna, do you sense, and these are young people, but they've uh, pointed their whole lives towards uh, by and large Olympic years. Do you sense the excitement starting to grow in your young chargers? Oh, definitely. Uh, they look at the calendar, they see how many more weeks to championships, yeah. to trials, and they can't believe it's here. It seemed like it was so far away, and all of a sudden it is here. So they've become a little bit more focused. Uh, they don't seem overly stressed at all, but they're trying to get everything nailed down, all the amplitude, every toe point and as consistent they they can become in, in all of their routines. Donna, congratulations not only for tonight, but for your great work through the years with the Parkettes in the Allentown region. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. And we enjoyed, of course, uh, bringing the Parkettes Invitational earlier this year. Bart, let's take a look now at the final results in the individual disciplines as well as the overall winners here in Rochester tonight. We start off with the vault, and here are the top three in each of the uh, uh, events tonight. Top four, rather. Andy Deluzio, perhaps, a bit of a surprise in a dead heat with Katie Lieberman, who had a fine meet. T. Orlando and Marcia Newby. And then, on the bars, Holly Weiss and Courtney Kupetz. Look at that. That was exciting because they are the reigning bars champions. Holly Weiss, the 2003 world champion, and Courtney Kupetz, the 2002 world champion. That was terrific. That tells you about the, uh, the uh, high level of this event. Holly Weiss again, Courtney Kupetz on the balance beam, then Brittany McGee slipping in the third. And then on the floor exercise, Tia Orlando capping an excellent and the top rated all around performance here, Marcia Newby and Kelly Fee. And the overall, Tia Orlando, I kind of gave it away just by a couple of digits over Marcia Newby and Holly Weiss. Good working with you, Mr. Connor. Thank Exciting. you very much, Lou. Happy not to see work you again with until you. Until Athens, I know you'll be busy over there. We'll give you a call from Athens while we're over there. We look forward to it. We thank you as always. We thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy our special presentation here from Rochester. The women on their way to Nashville, on their way from there to Anaheim, and from there, Greece and the Olympics this August. I'm Lou Tilly. Thanks for watching.